Hey guys, today I'm back in Besiege, and I wanted to try making rack and pinion steering for my car. Now I have a vague understanding of how it works, but I really just wanted to jump right in and start messing around. So let's get right into it. So I'm starting off in the sandbox like I normally do, and I didn't exactly know where to go with this. So I just started off by making a really long car, because why not? And after I got that in place and just let it go, you see it rolls, everything's good. But this is not what the goal of the video was. So I deleted the first half of the car and started working on a rack. Now the rack is one half the rack and pinion setup, and what it is is basically just a bar with a bunch of gear teeth on it that the pinion can interact with. So to get those gear teeth, I ended up just putting in gears and then freezing them in place, which means that they're not allowed to rotate on the beam. And here as you see as I try to rotate it, it just destroys itself since they're not able to rotate. And next I wanted to get in the pinion. I just wanted to see how it interacts with these gears since it's a little bit of a weird setup. So the pinion's just a static gear like this, I'm using a big gear for that. And I put some pistons on it so I can extend it back and forth, and you can see how it rotates on the rack. Now, I actually want the opposite of this. I want a static pinion being able to move the rack from side to side instead of a static rack allowing the pinion to move on it. So I put in the pinion like this and then disconnected the rack from everything. But you can see it just falls down here. And this is because now I have nothing attached to the rack. And if I just set everything on the ground, you can see as the pinion rotates, it can move the rack a little bit, but the rack ends up rotating a little bit out and the gear no longer meshes with it. So my first thought was just using sliders. Now sliders are easy because that's exactly what they do. They only allow things to expand out and not move up and down or left and right. But this actually caused some problems because sliders aren't perfect. They do allow things to sag a little bit or rotate slightly out. And here you can see the pinion actually got separated from the rack slightly and no longer was meshing with. It. So I added in another long chain of these sliders and then locked it in place and I was hoping it'd keep it a bit more stable. And it does, but you can see especially on the return here, the pinion is still skipping a lot on the rack. And the sliders aren't that great too, because they can only expand, they don't allow anything to contract. Which means with this current setup I'd only be able to turn the wheels in one direction. And now I got rid of the sliders because I thought there's probably some other mechanisms that were going to be able to keep this linear movement in a much better way. So my next thought for a mechanism to hold the rack in place was using a couple linear approximations. And the easiest way to do that is just to have two rods like this, or you could even do it with one technically, and be able to have them freely swing against two points above the rack. So after getting that in place now as I rotate the pinion, you can see the rack for the most part just moves left and right, and it's not able to move up and down. Now it does still move up a little bit because these are linear approximations and as the rods rotate more and more they lift up the rack a bit, but I could fix that just by increasing the length of the rods. And now as I move the pinion from side to side the rack ends up moving up almost a negligible distance. And that was pretty good but the rack's still able to swing forwards and backwards. And I had a few ideas on how to fix this. So the first one I thought was the easiest, it's just a friction thing. So basically if I just have a long wooden rod on the front of all of the gears, and then have another long wooden rod attached to the ground, as swung from side to side it'd rub up against this beam, and it wouldn't be able to move forwards and backwards. But I ran into a small problem, where it was literally just picking up this rod that was supposed to be attached to the ground. So I replaced the wooden beam on the front of the gears with smooth surface blocks, thinking maybe the smooth surface blocks wouldn't want to attach to something, but they still do. So I ended up decreasing their size a little bit as well, to hopefully just get them off of the rod enough that they'd slip past it, but they didn't, they still ended up just picking it up. So I decided that a friction fit probably wasn't going to work in that case, and I tried a few other things. So I moved the pinion out a little bit more, and I decided to try out some larger gears. So here I just literally expanded out one of the small gears in the rack. And this solution was better, but it didn't entirely fix the problem. Now besides just looking really stupid, the pinion was still able to slip around it, so it was still sort of a minor disaster. So I ended up just reverting back to the original gear size, and just tried stacking gears like this. But I still had the same problem, where if I tried to swing the rack from side to side, sometimes the pinion would be in between sets of gears and wouldn't rotate. So I thought this wasn't going to work either, and I just put the pinion back to its original position like this, and started working on my next solution, which ended up working. So basically the two rods I put in before were stopping the rack from moving up and down, but they weren't doing too much to stop it from going forwards and backwards. But if I had in another set of rods behind the rack, it should prevent it from moving forwards and backwards, and that's what I'm putting in here. So I just had to put in my hinges so that the rods can swing freely, and then just had to lock the ends of the rods in place. And now as I try to move the pinion, it can end up moving the rod to the left or the right, and it can lock it in place, which is what I'm going to need. So now that I had some movement that was pretty close to what I wanted, I decided to move everything up in the air a bit more, 
and start working on the connection points to be able to steer the wheels with this. So my first thought was to do something very similar to what I had in the back, and this was having a few rods attached to the rack directly. But now as I try to move the rack back and forth, it doesn't really get too far before it just ends up binding. And I think this is because the rods in the back and the rods that I just put in the front are kind of fighting each other, so they're not really able to move out correctly. So I was going to need a bit more of a creative solution to get this to work. And my first thought was to do something with a parallelogram linkage, so I deleted what I had before and started working on that. Now as I move this log in the back here, you can see it stays parallel to the log up front, but it's able to freely swing from side to side. And because the rack's in the front and not the back, what I ended up just doing is switching the pins from the front piece of wood to the back piece of wood. And now you can see it's the same thing except the front log's able to move from side to side. So to get this to work, what I decided to do was use a bracing piece from the rack directly attached to this parallelogram linkage. And I put in a few wheels here just to show you where the wheels would go. And if you give it another test, I still have that binding problem. And I should have expected this because what I still have is basically just a rod in the front here. And it's still fighting that rod in the back, which means the rack isn't able to move back and forth as full distance. So I still needed a good creative solution here. And my next thought was to use sliders to make this work. So by putting in a few hinges here and then a few more logs, if I use a few sliders here to allow my rod to move in and out, now if I give it a test, you can see as the rack moves more to the left or right, the sliders expand more, and that keeps everything from just binding up like it was before. And that was pretty good. Now, I also realized at this point I didn't need a parallelogram linkage, so what I did is just added some separate attachment points, and you can see it still works here. And then I just deleted the parallelogram linkage since I didn't need it. And the next thing I wanted to do was refine this a bit more. So increase the length of the log that's connected to the rack. And this will limit the angle that that log rotates through. And the other thing I wanted to do was add in two more logs for the left and right wheels to sit on. So I just need to add a hinge and two logs. If you use a few swivel joints and a couple braces on each of the logs, I create a bunch of parallelogram linkages, which keeps each set of logs parallel to each other. And then finally, I just put on those wheels so you can see it was happening. And if you give it another quick run, you can see it still works. Now at this point, I also had a bunch of useless stuff that I was adding on through some random tests. So I just deleted that. And now there's only one other thing I really wanted to do. I didn't like how the left and right wheels were going to be attached to the sliders, since the sliders are fairly weak. So I wanted the wheels to be attached to fixed points instead of those sliders. So all I had to do is add a couple wood pieces to the left and right side of the steering mechanism, and then just attach some hinges and logs to them. And then finally, I just had to put in a few bracing pieces attached to a few swivel joints. And now as I rotate the rack from side to side, it could tell each of these logs which the wheels are going to be sitting on. Now I'd also realized at this point, there was an easier way to do this. What we're going to have is a hinge attached to a bracing piece attached to the end of the rack, and attach that to the wood log instead. And now as we move the rack from side to side, you can see I still get that tilting mechanism. Now sometimes it gets a little unstable, but that's actually something I can easily fix in a bit. So I get rid of my whole slider mechanism since it ended up just being unnecessary, and copying the same thing over to the other side. And now if I give it another test, you can see I'm able to rotate those logs from side to side. And now finally I'm just extending them out a bit more, which makes them a bit more stable. Now I got a pretty good range of movement. So now that I had a way to sort of turn the car, I wanted to focus on shrinking it down, because having those massive rods was a little ridiculous and there was no way it's going to fit in the car. So my first thought was to use a true linear mechanism instead of using the rods as linear approximations. So to make that, the first step is to make a rhombus where I can change the internal angles. And for that, I'm just putting a bunch of swivel joints, and then just have to brace them together like this. And after doing that, if I give it a quick test here, you can see as I move in one of the nodes, all the angles are allowed to change, but otherwise the arms stay rigid. So that's the first step, and the next step is to make a arm to attach to this mechanism that's able to freely rotate. Now here I added that arm, but it's actually not able to freely rotate. It's attached to one of the swivel joints and rotates when I compress the rhombus. But after fixing that here, you can see I can compress it and the arm stays static. So the next thing I did was place a bunch of the swivel joints with a few wooden blocks. This changes absolutely nothing about how it functions. I just think the wooden blocks look a little bit better. And the next step is to attach that arm I made before to a swivel joint. Now here I'm just attaching it to a fixed joint so I can show you the difference. And now the rhomb is still able to freely compress, but that arm is stuck in place. But if I instead add a swivel joint, now if I give it another test, you can see that the rhomb is able to freely rotate around the swivel joint. And finally, I have to add in one last swivel joint. I'll do that like this. And I have to connect it to the left and right side of the rhombus. So I'm making those connections here. And now if I give it a quick test, this might not seem to be that amazing, but it's actually a pretty cool mechanism. So this wood block right here, if you watch how it travels on the ground, then you can use this line on the ground as a reference. You can see it's traveling in a perfectly straight line. And this actually isn't a linear approximation, it is actually going in a perfectly straight line. Well, assuming I didn't mess any of the geometry up, which I probably did a little bit. But in theory, it's a perfectly straight line. 
And the name of this linkage is this, which I didn't try to bother pronouncing. But this is actually going to be really handy, because we can make this much smaller than the rods we had before, while still being able to only let the rack move in a perfectly straight line. So after I was done making that, I decided to bring it back up to the top and connect it to where the rods were before. And now if you give it a quick test, it actually works. It's making the rack only move in one direction, but there's two problems. The first one is that it's not very stable in the vertical direction, which is fine because I'll add a second set of these on top of the rack as well. But also there's a lot of vibration. So to combat that a little bit, what I can do is just shrink down the mechanism by a factor of a half. And to do that, I just gotta move all the connection points in a little bit closer. And then I have to rebrace everything since the braces won't automatically become smaller. But after making that, you can see I have the same mechanism as before. It no longer has the same range of movement as the larger mechanism did, but it's actually okay because this one still moves far enough. So after making that, I just have to attach to the hinge and then connect it to the other side as well. And now if we give it another test, it actually worked fairly well to cut down on the vibration. So there's a minor optimization I could do here to the wheel attachment points. And for that, I could just move in the connection points to the rack further up. And by doing that, it's much less likely to fold in on itself like it was before. So I connected that to both sides. And now you can see it's still able to tilt the wheel attachment points to steer the vehicle. And then lastly, I wanted to copy over these mechanisms on top, like I said before. Now this was working but I didn't love it. And this is for a couple reasons. And the first one is that these mechanisms are good, but they're not incredibly strong. And the rack is still able to sort of deform its way out a little bit. And it could do it just enough that it no longer interacts with the pinion, which makes it slip. And then the tilt of the wheels ends up defaulting to most likely just going forwards. So my next thought was to go back to using a friction mechanism. Now, when I tried doing this before, if you remember, I had a lot of clipping issues, and I couldn't get things to be close enough without just grabbing onto each other. But I had a theory that if I use two smooth surface blocks close to each other, it shouldn't have any problems clipping. So here I made my rack by just having all of my frozen gears in between two pieces of wood like this. And then I surrounded all the pieces of wood with a bunch of smooth surface blocks. And after doing that, if I try to just run it on the ground, you can see it slides fairly easily. So the next thing I wanted to do is have this run against, instead of the ground, a second set of smooth surface blocks underneath the rack. So I'm just making that by putting a bunch of smooth surface blocks on a couple of wood beams. I just had to move them into place. But now if I try to move it, it wasn't moving freely anymore. Now, I think the problem here was that the smooth surface blocks were getting caught against each other, and this caused the mechanism to bind up and not want to slide easily. So to fix that, I deleted all of the smooth surface blocks, while wow, I'm saying that a lot, and instead I'm replacing each set with just a single really long smooth surface block like this. And by doing that, I eliminate the creases and it's able to slide freely, and I have that here. But it still is able to slip off to the left and right, and to fix that, what I can do is just basically copy what I have on the bottom to the sides. So I delete the smooth surface blocks on the sides, and then replace them with just a single really long one. I have to do the same thing on the frame as well. And after getting the mechanism as I like it on the one side, I just have to copy it over and mirror it, and then put it in place on the other side. Now if I give it a test here, you can see as I try to move it against the sides of the framing, it's not able to slide forwards or backwards. But if I try to slide it to the left and right, it's still able to freely do so. So after getting the tolerances as tight as I possibly could get them without the smooth surface blocks clipping into each other and then grabbing onto each other, I decided to try putting in a pinion to try to drive this. So I just put in a single powered gear like this, and it's able to move the rack. Now the single small powered gear is actually not the best fit for this since it binds up against the rack fairly easily. I found the bigger gear like this ends up moving much more freely. So I just had to put in a powered gear on the other side and then brace them together. And testing it here, it ends up being able to move the rack to the left and right, but it binds a little bit. So I shrunk the large gear a little bit, I think it was 95% of its original size. And after doing that, it almost meshes perfectly. So I deleted my mechanism from before since this one just ended up being better. And I just needed to add back in the wheel attachment points. So that was easy enough to just copy from what I had before. And after getting that in place, I just had to copy it over to the other side as well. And now giving it a test if I try to move the rack to the one side and the other using the pinion, it's able to tilt the wheel attachment points. And it's actually fairly strong too. Here if I use the drag tool on the left wheel attachment point, if I try to put a lot of force on this, you can see it's not budging at all. The pinion's holding the rack in place from moving. So this is really the big benefit over the last design. It's way stronger than the last mechanism. So I loaded in my car from the last few episodes that I've been building and deleted the front wheels. And actually, I deleted all of the stuff relating to the front steering, since we're basically just upending that whole thing. So I delete all that, and now I'm adding in the wheel attachment points. So it's basically the same as before, except the only difference is instead of using pins, I had to connect it to the frame of the vehicle. This is because if I pinned it in place, the vehicle would be, well, pinned in place, it wouldn't be able to move. So I get those in place, and then add wheels onto the wheel attachment points. 
And after making them nice and big like this, and bracing everything together, I remade my slider mechanism from the last world. So after moving that in place, I just had to brace it to the wheel attachment points, and then finally just basically brace everything together that used to be pinned. So now if I try to move the rack to the left and right, you can see it rotates the wheels as well. And now finally, I just want to add back in my pinion from before, using the powered gear and a large unpowered gear. I just have to set the controls of the powered gear to left and right, so that I can easily steer the car with the arrow keys. And then just have to shrink the pinion once again. Now if I give it a little bit of a test without the car moving, the pinion's able to rotate the wheels. So I wasn't entirely sure if this was going to be able to hold up while the car was moving forwards. So what I did is replace the output of the engine with just a powered gear, just as a quick test to make sure it was going to be able to work. And then I shifted the car into second gear. Now giving it a quick test, it actually ended up faring perfectly. The steering mechanism was holding up fine, it wasn't skipping or anything, so I was actually a little surprised by that. So I just put the output of the engine into the input of the transmission, and now if I shift it into second gear again, the car starts moving forwards. And I'm going to run into this mountain, so if I try to steer it to the left here, and let it run for a bit, it actually ends up steering out of the way. And I sort of played myself here, because I turned for too long during the time lapse. So I had to go for a kind of an emergency turn, and try to go as steep as possible. But this actually showed me there's two small problems with this. The first one is that the engine is actually binding up, you see it doesn't have enough strength to be able to move the car. Now this isn't a problem, I just have to shift it from second gear into first gear so I can get a bit more torque. But also these small wheels are kind of always really annoying, and here this front wheel actually ends up skipping against the ground, which decreases my turning radius, and here it decreases it just enough that I end up running into the rock. So now that I know the limitations of this thing, I decided to give it another quick test like this. So guys, thanks for watching. This Besiege car series sort of just accidentally happened, I definitely didn't intend to make four videos on this but it's actually a lot of fun, and I got a few other things I want to do to this. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask below, and otherwise, until next time.